Today we are making a super super soft and extravagant looking marble cake which is surprisingly so easy to put together using only one recipe based off my vanilla cake recipe. So we're going to start off with our incredibly delicious whipped chocolate ganache frosting first because it needs some time to set. So it is really easy to put together so you just want to start off by finely chopping up 270 grams of dark chocolate which is one and two third cups. I use 50% dark chocolate and then you just want to add that to a heat proof bowl and set it aside for now. If you're using chocolate buttons or pieces of chocolate which are already quite small then you don't need to do this step. Next add 675 grams of cream which is three cups to a saucepan and then heat it up on a low to medium heat until the cream begins to gently bubble. Once it starts to gently bubble take it off the heat immediately as you don't want to overheat the cream and then you want to immediately pour it over the chopped up chocolate from earlier. Now usually I would use a 1 to 3 ratio of chocolate to cream for a whipped dark chocolate ganache but I wanted my frosting to be a little more stable and have a deeper chocolate flavour so I'm using a 1 to 2.5 ratio of chocolate to cream for this ganache. Now you just want to let this sit for about 5 minutes to give the chocolate some time to melt and then you want to use an immersion blender to blend the cream and chocolate together. And you want to keep your immersion blender at the bottom of the bowl so that we aren't incorporating air bubbles into our ganache. You can also do this last part in a blender or food processor. Now once that's done it should be nice and smooth like this and now you just want to let this cool in the fridge. Now what I like to do is pour it into a wider dish because it'll cool faster and then you also want to cover the top with some cling wrap so that it's touching the top of the ganache and this will just prevent a skin from forming as it cools. Okay so this needs at least a few hours in the fridge because it needs some time to get really nice and cold so pop this into the fridge and let's go ahead and move on to our cake. Now before we start on our batter you want to preheat your oven to 160C or 320F with the fan on and grease or line two 8 inch cake tins. I'm using some homemade cake release today to grease my tins which I absolutely love because I'm a little too lazy to line my cake tins. Okay now set your cake tins aside and in a bowl sift together your dry ingredients. So I've got 300 grams of all purpose flour which is about two and a quarter cups, 25 grams of cornstarch which is a quarter cup, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. And then using a whisk just mix that all together until well combined. Okay now set this aside for now and in a large bowl add in 113 grams of room temperature unsalted butter which is half a cup, 105 grams of unflavored vegetable oil which is also half a cup, I like to use canola oil, and 332 grams of white granulated sugar which is one and two third cups. And then using a hand or stand mixer cream that together for two minutes until it's light and fluffy and you want to do this on a medium speed. Next you want to turn down your mixer to a low to medium speed and crack in three eggs one at a time mixing well in between each addition. So mix for about 10 to 15 seconds in between each egg. Okay next you want to add in one and a quarter tablespoons of vanilla, one teaspoon of white vinegar and 112 grams of room temperature buttermilk which is about half a cup and mix that in until well combined. This recipe uses one and a half cups of buttermilk in total but you only want to use half a cup for this step. Okay now get all of your batter off of your attachments because we're going to be mixing the rest by hand. So next you want to add in half of your pre-mixed dry ingredients from earlier and gently fold that in with a spatula until just combined. Then you want to add in a further one cup of buttermilk which is 225 grams and gently fold that in until just combined and then finish off by folding in the remaining dry ingredients until just combined. You don't want to over mix the batter so only mix until all the flour has disappeared and your batter is nice and homogenous. Okay so that is the vanilla part of our marble cake done but we're going to be turning half of this vanilla cake into chocolate. So divide the batter in half, I would recommend weighing it out so that you have an equal amount. Mine comes to about 685 grams each once divided in half. And then to one half of the batter add in 33 grams of cocoa powder which is a third of a cup, 
one teaspoon of instant coffee powder and one tablespoon of unflavored vegetable oil and then fold that together until just combined and the batter is nice and smooth. Okay, so that is our chocolate batter all done and now we just want to evenly distribute this both into our two pre-prepared cake tins. Now if you have your own method of marbling cake, you're welcome to go ahead and do that. But this is how I like to do mine and it creates this really cool pattern on the inside. So I'm starting off by placing about three tablespoons of the chocolate cake into each cake tin and then just spreading it out a little. And then on top of that, I'm placing three tablespoons of the vanilla cake and gently pushing it out a little bit too. Then I'm just repeating those steps. So three tablespoons of the chocolate, then three tablespoons of the vanilla. Now, every now and then, I like to just give my cake tin a gentle shake to help distribute the batter. Now, once you get to the end, just distribute any leftover cake batter evenly into the two tins, but still following the same pattern. And then once you're all done, drop your cake tins lightly on the counter to remove any large air bubbles and help even out the batter. Now, to finish off, you want to get a toothpick and then start on one edge of the cake tin and bring the batter into the middle of the cake with the toothpick. Then wipe your toothpick clean and on the opposite side, bring the batter again into the middle of the cake with the toothpick. And then just repeat these steps until you have this really pretty pattern like this. It kind of looks like a flower on the top. Okay, and now these are going to go into the oven for 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cakes are out of the oven now. They smell so good and they've got this really cool pattern on the top. They've been cooling in the cake tins for about 20 minutes and now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins and turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. These cake layers feel so, so incredibly soft and if you've tried my vanilla cake recipe before then you'll already know how fluffy and soft these cake layers are. So my cake layers are cool now, so before we go ahead and stack them, I'm first going to whip our dark chocolate ganache we made earlier. So if you take a closer look, you can see that we have this thick liquidy chocolate mixture now, which is what we want. And now to make it easier to whip, I'm just transferring it into a bowl. And now I'm just going to use my hand mixer to whip that up until we reach nice stiff peaks. It does come together quite quickly, so just be careful not to over whip your cream. Okay, and it is as easy as that. Just look at how good this looks. I could literally eat this whole bowl. Now, before I start layering my cakes, I'm just going to trim off a little of the top so that they're nice and flat. Once that's done, I'm starting off by placing my first cake layer onto my cake stand and spreading out a generous layer of my chocolate cream using my offset spatula. Once that's done, my next cake layer goes on top and then I'm just spreading another layer of cream on the top and sides of the cake. Once the sides are done, I'm also using my cake scraper to smooth it all out and then I'm also using my offset spatula to bring that top lip of cream into the middle of the cake. And then to finish off, I'm just doing some piping on the top with a 1M piping tip. And that is it, my beautiful marble cake is all done. This cake is like the best of both worlds. You have a delicious vanilla cake coupled with a rich chocolate cake and then a light chocolate frosting to bring it all together. It is so, so good. Mmm, that is so, so good. The cake layers are so, so nice and soft and that chocolate whipped cream frosting just goes so well. It's got a really nice subtle flavor and it's not too overpowering. So you've still got that flavor of the vanilla and chocolate coming through. So that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do give this cake a try, then don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content reach more people and I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.